Loving Father in heaven, thank you for this afternoon. Again, we are here to learn. We pray of the endowment of thy spirit, Lord, for without thy spirit understanding from thee, Lord, we cannot. You will say that if anyone lacks in wisdom, he may ask and you shall provide. Lord, we come at this time of need like little babies wanting to understand what you are saying to us. But uh, we do not want to understand alone. We want the wisdom to be able to implement the things we are learning. And so thank you for the grace and thank you for the promise that uh, you will be with us all way until the end of the world. And so we have asked in faith and we believe that you will accord us that which is right for us at this moment. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are in the habit of saying we are blessed when uh, we hear presentations. But uh, I don't know what uh, it means to us when uh, we say we are blessed. I mean, when I say that I have been blessed by a presentation, I mean that uh, the Lord has given me the grace and power to overcome my shortfalls and move in the right direction. I don't know when you say you are blessed by a presentation, what you mean. But when I say it, I am acknowledging the faith to move me to another step in life and not just to have the information. Every time we have such a meeting, the angels that excel in strength record with terrible exactness what has been given to us. And so we are told in the book of James, be doers of the word and not hear us only deceiving yourselves. And so we do not want to live here a people who have been blessed to hear. We want to live here a people who have been given the strength. We are told that the love of God constrains me and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't mean that uh, things will be so smooth to be implemented, but uh, what is impossible with man, it is possible with God. And so the things that we are learning are not strange things. Those who actually spoke of them and uh, were able to teach and practice them, they didn't face a very smooth road. Families were against them. Children were against them. Their own people whom they fellowshiped with, they were against them. The, there is a need of... Uh, much prayer and much humbling before the Lord and wisdom and tact to be able to execute all these things that we are learning. But we hear from the book of Revelation chapter 22 that the cowards will not be in the kingdom of God. And so this work needs a courageous people. People are minute men who can be counted on. God needs minute men who can be able to do this work. And I don't, th I don't know if I'll get this uh, uh, straight away. Uh, God, minute men. Uh, it's giving me. God needs minute men. Yes, here it is. I want to share this as we begin reorganization, as we continue in the issue of reorganization, because people are thinking that uh, things are going to be easy. The Lord has not promised to go easy with us. Every moment is threatened with eternal consequences. We are to stand as what? Minute men ready for service at a moment's notice. The opportunity that is now ours to speak to some needy soul, the word of life may never offer again. God may say to them, 
to that one, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, and through our neglect he may not be ready. In the great judgment day, how shall we render our account to God? They, you have been uh, in general conference, meet uh, board members and other churches where actually you went to a board meeting and they said that we are buying a padlock for a toilet and it took six months to do that. Are you hearing me? Yes. And you are the elders in those board meetings. Is it true? The church said we need three chairs and it took half a year to get three chairs, which are worth only $6 or 650 Kenya shillings. And you are the people who are in those board meetings. What am I trying to say? We are living in a time where Delay is not something that God is calling for. If we have to learn things, we have to wisely execute them because we have a greater work to do, but what? In a short time. So what if we left this meeting and again we meet next year to speak of the same things? That is a waste of electricity, a waste of food, and a waste of our time. Now, when you read Christ Object Lessons, it says that uh, if there is any talent that God will exact with terrible exactness, it's what talent? The talent of time. You may think that the talent of prophesying or, prof or, or teaching or the talent of this and that is what God will judge. You know, God is not concerned with those talents that you are thinking about in so much as he's concerned with the talent of time. Every precious moment wasted, the Lord counts on it that that is a soul lost. Between two seconds, a death can happen. But how is that soul prepared for that death? And so God wants a people who will move by the promptings of the heart, going forth in the faith of the apostles, knowing that God will provide everything they need. But a people who draws back, we are told in about two that the one who is going to come, he will soon do what? But he will not be pleased by those who do what? Draw back. And so we don't want to be in such a meetings where the deals of the latter rains are falling. And then we have our people next year meeting to discuss the same thing. When we meet in the next conference, which should not be far away from this month, we should be coming to report this and this has been done and this is one day. At least steps should be taken in the churches that you are going in, in the localities that you are going in. Don't spend so much time in debates and more so the great debates will not be with those who doesn't know the truth, but those who have deliberately not come to the meetings and they want to preoccupy you so that you may not go ahead with the work. The greatest debates that we have are not with the people who don't know the truth. Have you realized that? We are preoccupied with the debates with people who know the truth. We should be like Nehemiah and says that I'm doing a great work on the walls of Zion. I cannot come down to your standard. And work as if Tobias did not exist. We have to go forward and leave the results with God. But the problem is that you live here and you, you meet a brother and ask, uh, I was listening to what you are, was being presented. Did you examine that text carefully? What is that? Satan sowing the seeds of doubt in the messages the Lord has planted in our hearts. And so instead of giving time to people who will want to plant seeds of doubt in your heart, you better hold on to the truth that you have received and go forward as if such a people never existed. Reach the message to the people who needs the message. Do what you can with the little resources that you have. And so the Lord is wanting to do a reorganization amidst ourselves, and he needs men, men who will not be cowards, but men who can push forward. And when they leave, they will leave a heritage that uh, 
uh, they cannot be ashamed for when the day of the reckoning is read before us. Uh, I, I have been talking about a need of prayer and a need of enjoying a season of refreshing before the Lord. And I want you to see this in uh, uh, 1SM 118 and 1SM 122. That is Selected Messages, Book 1. Let, let me start with this. Because sometimes we always are crying about this and crying about that. But what does the Lord say? And right away, I'm recommending the book uh, Footprints of Faith by Dr. Paulson. It is only around uh, 38 or 45 pages of that book. It really changed how I approach things in these end times where actually people can't release their finances to do the work, but yet they will scorn and try to derail the work. In the work for this time, it is not money or what? Talent or learning or eloquence that are needed so much as faith graced with what? Humility. humility. No opposition can prevail against truth presented in faith and humility by workers who willingly bear toil and sacrifice and reproach for the word, master said. The prophet says, we must be co-workers with Christ if we will see our efforts crowned with what? Success. We must weep as he wept for those who will not weep for themselves and plead as he pleaded for those who will not plead for themselves. And then she says, some few pages down, page 122, the prophet still speaks to the church. The old standard bearers knew what? It was to wrestle with God in what? Prayer. In prayer. And to enjoy the outpouring of his, his spirit. By this, but these are passing off from the stage of action and who are coming up to fill their places. How is it with the rising generation? Are they converted to God? So the problem is that the generation is not converted. The problem is not the Lord is willing to do what he wants to do to his church. The problem is that the generation is not converted. Are we awake to the work that is going on in the heavenly sanctuary? Or are we waiting for some compelling power to come upon the church before we shall arouse? Are we hoping to see the whole church revived that time will come this year. It will, that time will come when you go to your churches and say, oh, we have been in a conference. And so God needs a people who can arise and do the work as if they were the only people on the face of the earth and the earth was to be converted by their efforts. This issue of looking to so and so and uh, 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 waiting for some compelling power to propel you to some doing of something will never come. We have to work as if this is a missionary field given to you alone and go forward and do the work. And how will the Lord uh, be able to accomplish this work? Some people are looking for some uh, strange things to happen. But how will the Lord shower his letter into his church and to his people at such a time as this? He says, and this is an a quotation uh, 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 from Isaiah 61, verse 11, and Zechariah chapter 10, verses 1. We must not wait for what? We must not wait for the latter rain. It is coming upon all who will do what? Recognize and appropriate the deal and showers of grace that fall upon us. And how will the latter rain come? When we do what? When we gather the fragments of what? Of light, when we appreciate the sure masses of God who loves to have us trust him, then every promise will be fulfilled. The whole earth is to be filled with the glory of God. And so as we participate in this issue of organization and gather the fragments of light that have been hidden in the a uh, 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 trash of uh, traditions, then the Lord is willing to outpour his latter rain upon us and the work will go forward and no human machinery 
will be able to stop us. Stop it. Reorganization. This is uh, a very important point that uh, points that we are looking at. And this is where we left yesterday. This is the statement that we left, but this was some paragraph before, some lines before. I am thankful that there is to be a time when the mist will be cleared away. I hope that this time has begun where? Here. Can we say with the prophet that that time has begun here? <clears throat> or we are waiting for another conference for such a changes to, make, to be made? We want the mist here to be done what? Cleared away. I want to say that from the life given to me by God, there should have been years ago, organizations such are now proposed. When we first met in conference, it was thought that the general conference should extend over the whole world. But this is not in God's order. Conferences must be organized in different localities and it will be for the help of the different conferences to have it thus. This does not mean that we are to cut ourselves apart from one another and be as separate atoms. Every conference is to do what? To touch every other conference and be in harmony with every other what? Not only should we touch by help and all these things, but we should be in harmony in what we teach. In fact, I'm proposing that we have another conference and there should be a discussion of those subjects again, not only on gospel order, but to be in harmony, what should be taught. Programs or uh, subjects should be uh, uh, proposed that can be presented and people learn so that we may go forward as a unit. Every conference is to touch every other conference and be in harmony with every other conference. God wants us to talk for this and he wants us to act for this. We are the people of God who are to separate from the world. We are to stand as representatives of sacred truth. And so in one T, and a uh, brother Zadok asked me to speak about uh, the hindrances that they had during the organization. And this hindrances will get them again as we reorganize. Testimonies to the church, does the prophet still speak? Yes. Or she has ceased? Because you have learned more. You have learned Greek and Hebrews until the prophet did not speak anymore. She was not a theological decider of truth. She was an encouragement and author. Is that how you take the prophet? I take her as a prophet and I take her as a messenger said of the Lord, send of the Lord. I was shown that some have feared that our churches will become what? Babylon, if they should do what? Organized. Organized, but those in central New York have been in perfect world. Now, can you replace New York with where you come from? Let us go together. But those in where? Have become what? When you go to Ndiwa, it's perfect Babylon. When you come back to Kisi, perfect Babylon. When you go down to Malindi, the more the center of perfection of Babylon. When you come back to this site, perfect Babylon. Kisumu, perfect Babylon. And the USA, the land that was endowed with more favor from God, where Protestantism was, it is again the greatest Babylon in the world. Not even two ministers agree on one point. Neither can they see eye to eye. And the same spirit, because we have favorite ministers coming from there, the same spirit is imparted to Africa. Should we not be connected with this breath? And we should. But unless we start moving as a unit and we don't see the need of organization, we are in perfect Babylon. Stop thinking that the purpose is the Babylon. You are the Babylon. With this... In fact, the Catholic Church should be said it is united more than the Seventh-day Adventists. Is that true or false? Between Seventh-day Adventist Church and Catholic, the Roman Catholic Church, which one is united more? Or maybe there are things happening in the background of Catholic we don't know. Seventh-day Adventists are so bold to put their things on the forefront, is it? And so, 
And now, unless the churches are so organized that they can carry out and enforce order, they have nothing to hope for in the future. They must scatter into what? Fragments. Now, we talked yesterday about the 144 standing on Mount Zion in a square perfectly united. And you want to be part of that congregation. I hear people saying, I want to be part of the 144. How can you be a part of 144 in such a divided state? And yet, when you read Revelation chapter 15, they are in a square united. And we hope someday that uh, those who die, all who die under the third angel's message, they'll be under what? The 144,000. How can that be in this, this unit? And yes, the prophecy says that those who die under the third angel's message should be part of the 144, but not in this disorganization. Philadelphian love must be restored. We read, previous teachings have nourished the elements of disunion. A spirit has been cherished to watch and accuse rather than to build up. If ministers of God will unitedly take their position and maintain it with decision, there will be a uniting influence among the flock of God. Separating bars will be broken to what? Hearts will flow together and unite like drops of water. What is that? That is the latter rain. Then there will be a power and strength in the world. The angel in Revelation chapter 18 will descend with its power. When organization actually happens and order is restored, drops of water drops upon the earth. The latter rain attends to the power of the messages. With exceeding anything we have yet witnessed. This is what we are waiting for. The angel of Revelation chapter 18, is it? The people seated here, are you waiting for the angel of Revelation 18? Hey, you seem not sure for what you are waiting for. Are you waiting for the angel of Revelation 18? Yeah. No. <laughs> Something that I'm trapping there. <laughs> huh? You are not waiting for it. It is already here. Where is its power? Theoretically, it is there. There's nothing like it is there theoretically and it's not there practically. If you don't have the other, you don't have the other. Don't, don't, don't flatter yourself that you have a theory of the third angel's message. If you haven't practiced a little of it, how can you say that you have a theory of it? There must be what? This is where we left now. There must be what? A reorganization. This is Spalding and Magan, page 302, paragraph 4. There must be reorganization. Supreme power must not be vested in a group of men connected with a few large institutions. Amen? At the General Conference of 1901, the light was given. Do what? Divide the General Conference into union conferences. Let there be a fewer responsibilities centered up on one place. Let the work of printing uh, publications be done what? Divided. Now, I think we don't understand the, the power of printed pages going out as autumn leaves. The division of the conference, general conference into district union conferences was God's arrangement. In the work of the Lord in this last day, there should be no what? Jerusalem send us. <coughs> no kingly power. And the work in the different countries is not to be tied up by what? Contracts to the work centering in Battle Creek or General Conference, for this is not what? God's plan. If uh, another ministry in a a good country, as you may call it, wants to bind you into contracts in how you should work. That is not what the Lord is saying. Brethren are to cancel together, for we are just as much under the control of God in one part of the vineyard as in another. Brethren are to be one in heart and soul, even as Christ and the Father are one. Teach this, do what? 
practice this, that we may be one with Christ in God, all working to do what? To build up one another. In this gospel order and, this, uh, and organization, bitterness and dissension is from Satan. And they should be avoided. Instead of bitterness and dissension, brothers should come together to counsel. The followers of Jesus Christ will not act what? Independently one of another. Our strength must be in God <clears throat> and it must be husbanded to be put forth in noble, consecrated action. It must not be wasted in meaningless movements. In union there is strength. No strife or variance should exist among what? The workers. The work is one superintended by one, and the leader is Jesus Christ. Again, union is strength, division is weakness. When those who believe present truth are united, they exert a telling influence. Satan well understands this. Never was he more determined than now to make of none effect the truth of God by causing bitterness and dissension among the Lord's people. The world is against us. Do you hear that? The world is what? Against us. The popular churches are done what? Are against us also. The laws of the land will be soon against us. If there was ever a time when the people of God should press together, it is when? No. Testimonies for the church, number 31, page 232, volume 4. Uh, this is volume 5, page 236. How did the angels fall from heaven? The angels who fell were anxious to become what? Independent of God. They were very beautiful, very glorious, but dependent on God for their ha happiness and for the light and intelligence they enjoyed. They fell from their high estate through what? Insubordination. Maybe you don't understand this. Do you know I, I look so intelligible when I'm here. But do you know why I look so intelligible? Yes. Why? No. <laughs> leave, leave that one alone for a minute. <laughs> why? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I look so intelligible when I'm here because you know, when you post me a question, I can pick Brian and, and say that, you know, Brian, I'm busy, handle that thing. Yet I don't know. And so this is the point I'm trying to make. In union, people will have a great power because they can call at each other to be able to help each other. But when you start by there, if you want to know, you know nothing. Try to move along. And you meet another person who will pose a question to you. A person who seems intelligent also. And you will see how you are naked. But if you are united, you see even the people who will want to attack you fear it. Because they know if I attack this brethren, I don't know what this one will say and this one and that one. But if you are alone, somebody to attack you is so easy. And so the angels, when they couldn't see uh, 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 no more reason for being connected to God and Christ and try to form an independent ministry and move alone, they fell down because they found out they cannot fight against the Father and the Son and the Holy Angels. And so the reason why we are being defeated in the field is because, you know, somebody will say, and you say that you believe this, and the other one believes that, and the other one believes that. Where is the, your union? They fell from their high estate through insubordination. And this is what exists among us. There is no uh, subordination. Christ and his church are inseparable. To neglect or despise those whom God has appointed to lead out and to bear the responsibilities connected with his work, and with the advancement and spread of truth is to reject the means which God has ordained for the help, encouragement, and strength of his people. To pass this by and think your light must come through no other channel than directly from God places you in what? In a position where you are 
liable to deception and to be done what? Overthrown. And that is why you, we are saying that just give some time these independent people. Give them some time. Not that we are praying bad for them, but they will never go as far as they have gone so far. You will see just them coming down and the people they have ministered to apostatizing. And so what is God doing? Let us read together. God is leading outward, not a few separate individuals here and there, one believing this thing and another, that angels of God are doing the work committed to their trust. The third angel is leading out. Let us read together. The third angel is leading out and purifying our people, and they should move with him. Some run ahead of the angels that are leading these people, but they have to retrace every step and meekly follow no faster than the angels lead. But some restless spirits do not more than half do up their work. As the angel leads them, they get into haste for something what? New and rush on without divine guidance and thus bring confusion and discord into the ranks. They do not speak or act in what? Harmony with the body. Now, the word of God does not give license for one man to set up his own judgment in opposition to the judgment of what? The church. Neither is he allowed to urge his opinion against the opinions of the church. If there were no church what? Discipline and government, the church would go to what? It could not hold together as a body. There have been, ever been individuals of independent what? Minds who have claimed that they were right, that God has especially taught, embraced, and led them. Each has a theory of his own, views peculiar to himself, and each claims that his views are in accordance with the word of God. Each one has a different theory and faith, yet each claims special light from God. This draw away from the body, and each one is separate church for himself. All this cannot be right, yet they all claim to be led of God. The word of inspiration is not year or nigh, but year and amen in Christ Jesus. I went to Meru, the, the places of this young man, John Moore, and met that man, Boston, the little horn. The man says that he is a little horn. Do you know what is the peculiar characteristic of a, the little horn? The little cone does not have ears. It only have a mouth. So he says, I can't listen to you, my brother. I can only speak and you listen. I told Boston, you want me, you want to speak and I listen. Then go ahead and speak. Brother, are you still going to the church? I said, yes. Then you are in Babylon. Right now, we should be in home churches. I told him, speak on. And he continued speaking. And I told him, you have been speaking. I haven't seen you open the Bible. Open the book of Hebrews 10, 25. And he said, I have done speaking to you. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> the man called Bosto, the little horn. And he is adamant that he's going to hell. These are not jokes. And he is so proud to call himself a little horn. What a shame. Such an independent mind. No discipline, no nothing. He is a king in his own house and he thinks he can be a king when he comes to the church. Told him after speaking, now you can leave. You want to do some very important things here. And he left and we continued with the meeting. Sometimes you give them a chance. When they raise their hands, you give them a chance, they speak. Yeah, 
Why, why should I bar him to speak? I just stand there and speak to us what you want to speak. And when you are done, leave. We continue with the meeting. Because you had a message for us you have given. Why delay here? Go and give it to another place. So if a person comes there, he has a message. I don't leave the pulpit. Speak to us from there. And if you are another little horn, you speak and leave because you don't have ears. God says that such an independent minds who have claimed that they were right, that God has special taught, embraced, and led them, they are nothing. There's nothing like that. And so when you go to Mary, be as wise as a dog because somebody will beat you there. They are ready to fight physically and spiritually. Conversion is rare in those areas. In our village, we have 10 independent ministers, all claiming to be sent of God. And instead of going to look for members who are not of the church, they have to come to take the members of the church. While Christ says that go ye into the world and teach, they are coming into the church to try and take the members whom they think they are in apostasy. Meaning they do not even understand the great mission. How will they understand uh, the great commission? How will they even understand the great mission? Evil does not result because of organization, but because of making organization everything and vital goodness of little importance. And so we looked at the form of organization and I want to pass over. And when you are organizing and forming churches, this is how they were led to admit members in the church and appoint the officers. In this uh, beautiful book that we are reading on, the church is order, uh, organization and discipline, page 127, paragraph one. We, the undersigned, when you are forming the church, hereby associate ourselves together as what? A church, taking the name what? Covenanting to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So what will you do when the name has been copyrighted and is institutionalized? What will you say? We the undersigned hereby associate ourselves together as a church, taking the name of Huh? You are stuck now. <laughs> I'll let you think about that. Reception of members. Let all candidates for admission to the church after its organization be received by unanimous vote of what? Of the church unless the opposition to their admission comes from those who are at the time subjects of labor or under the censor of the church. What? I can't hear you. Let all candidates for admission to the church after its organization be received by unanimous vote. This is, uh, we are talking about reception of members. Unless, let them be accept, unless what? The opposition to their admission comes from those who are at that time, subjects of labor or under the censure of the church. Now, if somebody wants to be admitted to the church, there are people who are laboring in the field and they know the conduct of this person. They are the ones who can object to admission of this person. Or if uh, the person has been censured by the church and the, his conduct has not, being rectified. The members can object to this. You know, we fear this. We fear, sometimes we fear discipline because there are a lot of quotes that uh, Sister White says that let no one raise a hand for this fellowship. Have you read those quotes? 
Have we read this, those quotes that mm -hmm. you should never raise your hand to disfellowship somebody? But why don't we balance with other quotes that uh, she talks about people should be disfellowship? There are specific things when people do, they shouldn't be part of the church. And the church sitting in a business meeting without hiding in a secret, they have to have their Bible and inspiration. Their work is not to condemn, but the work is to show this person the truth. And she says that the person should not be disfellowshipped after actually uh, efforts like you will work for somebody who is an unbeliever, a man. Work very hard for this person. But if he rejects and willingly continue in this sin, then they have to be disfellowshipped. And those who sympathize with them, they should be disfellowshipped with them too. So church officers, the members being thus enrolled, they are prepared for the election of church officers. The following classes of rulers and officers of the Christian church are brought to view in the New Testament. Apostles, evangelists, elders, bishops, pastors, and deacons. These who will divide into two great what? Those who hold their office by virtue of an special call from God and those selected by the church. The former embracing apostles and evangelists and the latter elders, bishops, pastors, and deacons. Okay? So you know whom you can elect in the church. The members can elect these people. You cannot elect an apostle. You cannot elect an evangelist. Neither can you elect a prophet. But you can elect an elder, a bishop, a pastor, and deacons. Some of these phrases are used in the changing. <clears throat> hmm? Okay. So an example of this, the following form of organization and question used in organizing the Northside Swedish Church in Chicago has been considered by some of the General Conference Committee as suggestive form of questioning to be used in organizing a, a church. And so we introduce it here. Uh, I want us to read on the screen. I want us to concentrate because these are the things we shall be called on to do. We can perfect on this by only inspiration. After speaking a few minutes concerning the principles of Seventh-day Adventist, the elder said he would take three persons who are desirous of entering into church fellowship and question them closely concerning the principles to be recognized in entering the, into church. And he desired all the others who wish to enter into the organization to note closely every point for as they should present their names, they would be done what? Asked if they endorse these principles without, on this occasion, asking each one the separate questions. Three persons were then selected to be questioned. This is the organization and the forming of the church. And who are to constitute the nucleus or beginning of the church organization. The elder then said, instead of what? Forming a creed in which is expressed every item of? Those entering into church fellowship attach their names to a church covenant which reads as follows. We, the undersigned hereby associate ourselves together as a church, taking the name Seventh day Adventist, covenanting to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. In a covenant of this character, we endorse the entire Bible as a rule of and leave room for the Spirit of God to enlighten us in regard to the truth of His word, not being bound down by any. Read. So the following questions were asked to the candidates who wanted to join the church. Let us try to go through this because uh, I believe that uh, this will help us in some way to ask the question. Number one, together. So uh, I'm trying to enroll you in a church, okay? Do you accept the Bible as the rule of your faith and practice? Yes. Yes, we do, is it? Will you study to learn the truth of the word and practice those truths in your lives? Yes. Do you understand the doctrines taught by the Seventh-day Adventists and do you believe them? 
You know, I can test you one, one by one on this number three. And if you are fine wanting, you are not enrolled in this church. Number four, have you confessed your sins to God as far as they have been made known to you? And have you, on your part, as far as in you lies, tried to make matters right with your fellow men? No, people will not say yes here. I'm looking at everyone. I can see you are still at variance with your brothers. So we pass on number four, is it? <laughs> I can see at the end of the day, we will not have a church. Tabi, are we together? Yeah. Yeah, and this is why he said these questions are personal, but being asked in a group. So three were elect, uh, selected and asked these questions, but they were personal questions. So instead of going through 30 people wanted to come to the church, they were put together and asked these questions. So we go to number five. Uh, I can see if we are going to have a church here. Do you claim by faith in Christ that God for Christ's sake has forgiven our past sins and that he is yours and you are his? Ah, yeah. Six. Do you recognize the fact that as truly as God claims the seventh part of time as his, so he claims one-tenth of all our income as his for the support of his work in advancing the glorious gospel of Christ, and will you faithfully render to his own the time? Seven, the crucial one. Will you submit to the decisions of the body of the church in matters of church discipline? In other words, will you seek the peace, harmony, and unity of the church rather than press an individual opinion to cause confusion in the church? And she quotes testimonies to the church, volume five, page 107. Now here you are going to clash with the testimonies. Is it? Let us try number eight. Will you, besides this, Contribute of your substance as God may prosper you for the upbuilding of the various branches of his cause. Will you seek to build up the interest of the church by attendance upon its meetings, ordinances, and adding your influence to extend its work while the church on their part exercise their watch care over you? Do you understand the principles of Christian temperance? as taught by the Seventh-day Adventists, and will you carry out those principles, abstaining from the use of liquors, tobacco in all its forms, coffee, tea, and swine's flesh? In short, will you truly study the subject of Bible temperance and practice in, into your life? <coughs> you know, 90% of Seventh-day Adventist pastors will not pass number 10, and some of us here. What was taught in, about the camp meetings in the morning? No one will pass number 10. We even don't use judiciously what is right. Number 11. In the matter of dress, will you follow the Bible rule of plainness of dress? Abstaining from plumes, feathers, Banging the hair and the wearing of gold as ornaments and costly array as taught in volume six, page 97. Huh? So we were excluded from the meeting first. <laughs> you go read that volume. Then you come back to take the test. Number 12. Do you believe the Bible doctrine of spiritual gifts? And do you understand the nature of the gift of prophecy, which has been manifested through Sister E.G. White, and which has been connected with the message from it is very commencement? And as far as you understand the instruction from that source are in harmony with them. Or she's a favorite author. <clears throat> You, of course, recognize all 10 of the commandments are spoken from the Lord from Mount Sinai 
are still binding. And by God's grace, will you keep those commandments? The fourth with the rest, rendering to the Lord as his sacred time, the seventh day, by the world called Saturday. Yeah, you may argue with the, the, the Saturday there because we know Saturday starts 12 to 12, is it? But the Sabbath starts from sunset to sunset. So there's just a wording there, but the notion that he had, it's correct. By submission to Christ and his grace, will you seek to grow in grace as well as in the knowledge of his truth? Or will, will you wait for the pastor? Fifteen. Have you been immersed, baptized in the likeness of Christ's death, and so now walk in the new life, having been raised to the likeness of his resurrection? Number 16, are you the three, uh, are you, are you three in Christian fellowship with each other? They, they were uh, interviewing the three. With each other, and do you each by uplifted hand accept the other to constitute the nucleus of this church? Because they were interviewing three and they were asking them if they are at variance or if they are in unit. There's a point that I'm coming in that if you go a place and you want to establish a church and the church there, the people there, they are not agreeing, you should not establish that church. So we looked at the letters of commendation and then the minutes were signed by the committee. So this experience, the last segment, as I go through it, the experience is, uh, the early experience in this establishing this gospel order. And we have a document there. You can download it from our website. Uh, I want you to see this meeting because this is where, where I'm closing this, the meeting they had and the difficulties they had at that time. This is an Adventist Review and Sabbath Herald. The conference convened for business meeting, that is uh, October 5 to October 6, 1861. Evening after the Sabbath, October 5 at 6.30 p.m., Elder Joseph Betts was chosen chairman, Uriah Smith secretary. Meeting opened by prayer by Brother Wu, Brother White. Brother White, breath, brethren, White, Laura, Cornell and Hall, having consulted together in regard to the business to be brought before the conference, Brother White proposed that if the conference will accept them as a committee to present business to the meeting, they were ready to report. And so they were given a chance. On motion of Brother Ghani, these brethren were accepted as the business committee of the conference. The first business, let us look at it. Uh, we are just passing through this history so that you may understand organization, gospel order, and the difficulties that were there and the difficulties that we are going to meet. The first business presented was the organization of what? Brother Laura said, I consider it proper and necessary to consider here the organization of what? As the subject has been agitated among us, especially for the last six months, and in order to bring the matter before the meeting, I move that we consider the proper manner of organizing churches. Seconded by Brother White, Karen, uh, Brother White then presented the following resolution. Resolve that this conference recommend the following church covenant. We, the undersigned here by associate ourselves together as a church, taking the name Seventh day Adventist covenanting to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, seconded by Brother Hart and adopted. The vote not being what? Full. The way we just behave in our board meetings, we want a vote and the vote is not what? Full. Because people are afraid of something. Listen to these things, let us read them together. The vote not being full, these are the experiences they went through. Brother White said, I hope what? That matters of so much important will not be passed by without. If any are disposed to question them, nothing hurt what? My feelings more than the non-committal position of some 
at last fall conference. I hope therefore that this subject will have the benefit of full and free discussion and that the sisters will take part in the vote and that the action may be unanimous. I will be in favor of trying this vote again. So people were opposed to organization and the vote was being moved without a full vote. Moved by Blaubra that we reconsider the last vote. What did Laubra have to say? Brother Hal said, I have put very few words to say on this subject. The covenant proposed is very nearly such a one as I have several times written out for churches who are about to do what? The need of some such a covenant has been say, seen and felt. I believe it is according to apostolic custom to have our names signed to something. And this must be something written out. We pledge ourselves only to do one thing. To do what? To keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. There can be nothing more in Christianity. We pledge ourselves to help each other along in the Christian journey. No one can call this creed or article faith. So... This covenant that we covenant to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, even some were uh, seeing it as a creed. Can you imagine? <laughs> Do you see how organization was difficult? Brother Bington, if we carry out this matter, not only merely covenanting to do, but practically doing it, then it can be said of truth. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So you say with Bington, we should not covenant, but we should just practice. Now we are getting votes. Brother White, if there is no one to raise any objection to this step, I have almost a mind to raise some myself so that the subject may be discussed. Circumstances have driven me to an examination of this subject somewhat. And it is a very clear one to my mind, but perhaps it might be objected to on this ground. It will look like patterning after the churches around us and what will be the influence. I would like to hear remarks upon this point. This point of covenanting, Brother White is saying that I would like to hear about it. It will certainly be doing like those around us and certain individuals will say that we are following after Babylon, and this may be an objection in their minds, that they, what they are doing is a creed. Brother Lau Brana responds. It may be, it may with equal propriety be said that we are patterning after the churches in building meeting houses. We call the churches Babylon not because they covenant together to obey God. I am still of the opinion I advance sometimes seen through the review. The first step of apostasy is to do what? to get up a creed telling us what we shall believe. The second is to make the creed a test of what? The third is to try members by that. The fourth, to denounce as heretics those who do not believe that creed. And fifth, to commend persecution against I plead that we are not patterning after the churches in any unwarrantable sense in the step proposed. What was the step proposed? Covenanting to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. But this is having an issue again. Brother Cornell, the point is the covenant is to keep what? Sometimes do we argue some things on board which will not be argued and spend hours and hours on one minute. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. The point is, in the covenant is to keep the commandments of God and the faith. I never heard of a people making such a, and hence cannot consider that we are patterning after the churches in such a covenant as what? As that. We have Bible, classes, are we still together? And Sabbath school, just like the churches, but no one accuses us of patterning after them in this respect. Brother White, 
I am convinced not by what the brethren have said, for I was convinced before. I wish to say a word now in favor of the resolution. I prefer that the brethren should be uniform in these things. This will tend to unity in the church. Let us set a right example here and let it go out from the meeting. This one reason why I will vote for this covenant. On the subject of what? I agree with brother Laubra. I never weighed the points which he has presented. As I have seen, I began to examine the subject myself. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13, we read, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, it is. Here we have the gifts of the church presented. Now he continues. Now I take the ground that creeds do what? Stand in direct opposition to what? Let us suppose what? A case then. We get up stating just what we shall believe on this point and the other. And just what we shall do in reference to this thing and that. And say that we will believe the gifts too. But suppose the Lord, through the gifts, should give us some new light that did not harmonize with our creed. Then, if we remain true to the gift, it knocks our creed all over at once. Mm -hmm. Making a creed is setting the stakes and barring up the way to call all future advancement. God put the gifts into the church for a good and great object. But men who have got up their churches have shut up the way or have marked out a course for the Almighty. They say virtually that the Lord must not do anything further than what has been marked out in the creed. A creed and the gifts thus stand in direct opposition to each other. Now, what is our position as a people? The Bible is our creed. We reject everything in the form of human word. We take the Bible and the gifts of the prophets, of, or the gift of the spirit, embracing the faith that thus the Lord will teach us from time to time. And in this, we take a position against the formation of our creed. We are not taking one step in what we are doing toward becoming Babylon. And these are the things we have to teach the church. Brother Cornell, the meeting is about to be over. I think we have many examples in the scripture of the people of God entering into a covenant. It is always proper to covenant to do right. And there can be no more appropriate covenant than to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. He reads 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 15, verse 12, and says, Here it seems the people of God were at one time together and all entering into a covenant to do what the Bible commanded them to do. I think in the step we propose, we are only entering into a covenant to do what the Lord commands us to do. Brother Bington, a covenant, I understand, is a promise or a vow. The Bible requires us to pay our vows unto God. We could not pay them unless we had made them. We had made, we, we had made, uh, made them. Brother White, the 19th chapter of Exodus shows that there was a covenant entered into between God and the people to keep the commandments of God. God promises that if they would keep the commandments, he would be their God. And the people say, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Read 2 Kings chapter, is this chapter 33? 23, verses 3. And so, Brother Laura, the greatest objection that rests in the minds of individuals now, what was the problem? I presume is having this thing set down in? I do not know as I ever went into a meeting, but there were some to express the determination to renew their covenant. Now there is the covenant, but to just put that down in writing seems in the minds of some to be what? Okay. So keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ, just putting it down seemed <laughs> Babylon. Do you see the experience that these people pass through? <laughs> they have the right thing, but even the way to do it now is becoming a problem. You see, at once, that here is where the difficult lies. For when I state a thing, I endorse it. And all the difference there is between that and what we now propose is that one is set down in writing and the other is not. 
And that is the problem we are having here, even when we are going to propose that we have conferences. We say, okay, we are proposing that we will have the conference. Okay, let us write down, no. Because it will tie us down. So what is the problem? The second business meeting. The next question being in regard to the proper manner of organizing churches. After some remarks by different individuals, the following uh, uh, resolution was presented by Brother White. Resolve that we refer this subject to the ministers present, instructing them to hold a Bible class on it and write an address to the brethren to be published in the review. And uh, we have seen how now the church should be organized. That uh, when you go somewhere to do an evangelistic campaign and uh, we don't want these things of doing an evangelistic for one week and then you hurry people into the water, you baptize them, you put a church there and then we have, uh, what did you call it yesterday? Uh, what was the name? Ministers of Shkilia. The third business, organization of conferences. Listen to now the organization of the conference. On this subject, the following resolution was presented by Brother White. Resolve that we recommend to the churches in the state of Michigan to unite in one. Like we recommend the churches in Kisi to be one conference. In, uh, uh, with the name of what? Kisi Conference of the Seventh Day Adventists. Resolve that the conference be composed of ministers and delegates from the churches. So who should compose the conference? Huh? Ministers and delegates of the churches. Brother Laubra, that the officers of this conference consist of what? A chairman, a clerk, and a standing committee of three. So this is some kind of form of organization and how the conference is working. Are we still together? Are we following? Okay. Resolve that our present chairman and clerk act as officers of this conference for the coming year. Brother White, resolve that John Lowbrow, Moses Hall, and M.E. Colonel will be on the conference committee. The fourth business, ministers' papers. We looked at this yesterday. That our ministers' papers consist of a certificate of ordination, also credential to be signed by the chairman and clerk of the conference, which credential shall be renewed annually. And this is where there were contention yesterday. Resolve that this conference give credentials. So each, each conference has to give its own credentials to its ministers. That this conference give credentials to the ministers of this state who are in good standing and it was adopted. Uh, whereas there are heavy debts upon the Seventh Day Adventist Publishing House Association, therefore, Resolve that we recommend that to the brethren scattered abroad to remember in their liberalities the ones of association adopted at John to eight o'clock in the morning. So I'd like to stop there. And so I'll be going to this matter of use of tithes and offering. So those are some of the experiences that uh, the children of God had when they were starting the conference at that time. And these are the situations that we will have to meet. These are the things we shall have to meet. And uh, you see that they are saying that uh, the conferences should touch each other and even help to offset the debt that uh, the publishing house has. That they, we recommend to the brethren scattered abroad to remember in their liberalities the ones of the association, which means the, the, the publishing house had uh, a debt and different conferences had to uh, uh, give something towards this. And so uh, this is uh, what I can present uh, in uh, short about the organization. There are so many materials to go through and uh, uh, I'm praying that uh, we will have people going through them and uh, bringing in fresh ideas in how we can advance <laughs> in the work. And uh, as a brother said that there's uh, brother Zadok that there's a lot to read 
he himself is reading. I, I barely understand all these things. Uh, I'm still continuing to read. Even after eight years, I don't understand, I think. I can just tell you little by little. But I haven't, say, grasped everything that should be grasped. I need to go through tons of materials also to be able to precisely. But uh, I will say this. Do you know how God works? Where there is willingness, God does what? Gives the power. God will never see his children struggling to do things, and he says, let them struggle to read and do that. We can decide to even pray this week, and God will show us precisely what to do. We don't have to go through voluminous things. If a sincere heart among us will go on his or her knees and tell the Lord, the time that we have is short. We have to finish the work. We don't need to read these things. Tell us what we do, and we are ready to do it. The problem is that we want information which we cannot act upon. Will God give such information? No, God does not waste anything. If he gives information, he wants people to act on. Now, if you haven't acted on this little information you have, how do you expect to work on a greater information? It is impossible. So my proposal is this. We act on the little information we have the Lord will increase the light. We don't have to get, to get the whole thing. It will be like a floodlight unto us. Let us take this dimming light that is in the dark tunnel and use it to uh, uh, circumvent our, our way through. And then the Lord, let us use it to map our way through. And then the Lord will tell you, here you are wrong, here you are right. You can perfect it like this and like this. But it will need a cooperation and a union of all of, all of us. When we live here, I'm really requesting that we go read. So that next time somebody will come up with something, not of his own self, but what the Lord has shown him through these things. And we can perfect on it. May the Lord bless us. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, you have never failed in your work, and you will never fail. Even though men fail, Father, your work will stand still, and the heavens declare your glory. Your handwork still shows that you are God and you are in control. I want to believe that you have not gathered us here for confusion, but you have gathered us here to do the right thing. And so we are praying for the impartation of thy Holy Spirit that you may renew the zeal that the pioneers had when this movement started. And Lord, it may be seen among us this young people who wants to finish the work. And so thank you because you have heard our prayers and you will answer it. Not that because we have been so righteous in thy own eyes, but because you have promised to forgive our sins and where there is a willing heart, thou will work with that heart. And so we are willing. Use us, Lord, the way we want it. We cannot even give you our hearts, Lord. We just request you may take them and seal it for thy courts above. Human beings are so frail and weak, they promise to do this and they fail in it. Father, we want just to submit unto thee in thy promises, holding them by faith that what you have promised in thy word, you shall do to those who are seeking you. And so we thank you for the blood of thy son and for the spirit of thy son. We thank you for what you are doing for your churches. And we thank you for what you are doing in this meeting. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.